Hi, my name is Wayne Martin. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about some of the changes in data storage technology that will affect libraries in the future. Uh, certainly uh, personal libraries, which people uh, may have uh, maintained as books on bookshelves, which will now be available uh, in e-form uh, increasingly. Uh, I've demonstrated this uh, e-book reader to you before. Uh, and pointed out uh, yesterday, uh, my last video anyway, that these are two slots that are available. One is a Sony slot for uh, a dual pro chip that uh, will hold up the 16 gigabytes of storage capacity in the slot. And this is an SD or secure digital uh, two gigabyte and uh, possibly four uh, uh, gigabyte capacity, uh, which will offer potentially uh, 16 maybe 20 gigabytes uh, together. Uh, this puts a lot of, of, of firepower, if you will, in the hands of a, of a book reader uh, in the sense that he, could, uh, he or she can download literally thousands of books um, uh, onto a device like this. Uh, one of the, the sources for e-books is, is, a, is a website called Project Gutenberg. Project Gutenberg's been around for maybe 30 years. Uh, it was their uh, hope years ago to put uh, an online source uh, of books, make online sources of books available to people who had access to the, the <coughs> to the very early internet, which was called ARPANET. Um, and uh, over time, the, uh, they have uh, grown to about 30,000 titles. That number is dwarfed these days with Internet Archive and, and, and Gutenberg, or excuse me, uh, Google. But still, um, they have, uh, it's a good source of text uh, materials for the classics. Um, uh, recently, I, I <coughs> was uh, digging around in the net and uh, found uh, that somebody had downloaded uh, all of the books from Project Gutenberg and had formatted them for the Sony. He uh, was a programmer in, in Holland that I eventually chased down through a series of web postings that he made. And he did it primarily because he just wanted to do it and find out how long it took. But what he ended up doing is creating a, um, a 7.5 gigabyte um, archived file, which was up on one of his websites, which took about two and a half or three days to download. and. Uh, as you all know what these are, these are just a standard DVD disc. Um, <coughs> it was a, a slightly compressed version of the, uh, of the files. He, he'd thrown away a goodly number of them. There were actually only about 11,000 books uh, on that uh, particular archive file. Uh, but it showed that you know, for, for the cost of a little bit more work, uh, he could have uh, made the whole thing available for maybe 20, 20 24 gigabytes. Um, what's important about that is that uh, the idea of, of having a device that holds, that maybe has 20 gigabytes on it, uh, and you'd say, well, why do I want that? Where, do, where am I going to get 11,000 books from, much less where am I going to read, or how, how will I find time to read 20,000 books? Well, these are two separate questions, of course. So. At any rate, the issue is, before you can read them, you have to get them. And so now we're at the point where there are websites on the, on the, um, available on the web that anybody with a fast enough um, broadband, and, and I, I have a low-end DSL line that runs at 2.5 or 3 gigabit, uh, megabits, um, you can download this stuff over a couple of days um, in the background. And, and all of a sudden, you've got your, you know, your hands on 11,000 books that were, in this case, formatted for the, for the Sony. Um, so um, that's kind of exciting if, if you're into collecting, creating new libraries that you've never had your hands on before. Uh, certainly, all of the masters, the books of the masters, are now available at virtually no cost because Project Gutenberg's original mission was to make all of these digitized versions uh, available for free. Uh, what I wanted to point out, though, for some folks who may not be fully aware of what's happened in the world of DVDs, is that this original form factor, this DVD, which is really a CD-ROM, which was developed in the late 
70s, early 80s, and it held, I guess, maybe 700, 750 megabytes of storage. When DVDs came along, that jumped to um, a little over four, and then when double-sided came along, it, it went to about eight, eight and a half, something like that. Um, there's a new format called Blu-ray, actually we're two, HD and Blu-ray, but Blu-ray seems to be the, uh, the format that has uh, become dominant. And these start off at 25 gigabytes. Uh, they also have a 50 gigabyte. Both of these are on the market now. There's also a 100 gigabyte and a 200 gigabyte um, drive uh, in the works. The 100 gigabyte has been demoed, and, and actually the 200 gigabyte's been around in the lab for three or four years, but because of the HD Blu-ray battle that had to take place, um, the development of the 200 dry, uh, gigabyte drive uh, has been very slow. In terms of media costs, right now, um, looking on the net and just trying to find the cheapest prices, uh, the 25 gigabyte uh, Blu-ray discs run from 13 to 23 dollars. Um, the 50 gigabytes are about 45 dollars. I couldn't find any 100 gigabyte, but obviously they'd be about 100 if you could find them, and 200 for the 200 gigabyte based on just uh, projections. Um, that's that's really exciting because when you start looking at what you can do 